Right, welcome back, my good people. I'm gonna try and make this intro as fast as possible. Uh, even though whenever I say that, I tend to delay. <laughs> but you may notice this isn't a gaming video. It is a sports video, football in particular. As many of you may know on the channel, I am a Real Madrid fan, so I did have the opportunity to be a guest on the MAD Sports Network, uh, hosted over there by Mac, Devo, and Flo. And so they did bring me on just to talk about Real Madrid, what happened last season, uh, and some thoughts going into next season. So I figured I might as well share it here as well, because I also have done some features on a few podcasts, especially La Cancha podcast, uh, which you've probably seen me share on the community tab before. But um, La Cancha, we just do audio there. So here, since there was a bit of a visual aspect, I did figure I might as well just share the video here on my channel as well. So, if you're interested in football, you might like the video. If you're not interested in it, then, you know, you can just skip it. And it is what it is. But as always, thank you for tuning in. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, stay dangerous, stay blessed. And I hope you're having a dope-ass day wherever you are. Peace out and enjoy the video. Ah, good evening and welcome to Mac and Devo Do Season 2, Episode 3. 42 minutes late because of just a minor technical issue. I'm Gav Mack. That's your boy Devo. And patiently waiting down there. Real Madrid fan. Hello, Madrid. King Taps. How are you, bro? I'm doing good. Happy to be on the show. Yeah, we're happy to have you, man. Happy to have you. I mean, long time support of the show. So we thought we'd reach out and, you know, show our appreciation and get you on to speak about Real Madrid. Um, <laughs> That's a massive honor. Indeed, yeah, before yeah. we start with any pleasantry stuff, just make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash MAD Sports Network, smash the notification bell, hit that like button. I don't really always remember how to do that stuff. It makes me feel really, <laughs> really old, you know, when I do that bit. Uh, but you can do that stuff. And also make sure you listen to us if you don't want to see our handsome faces on Spotify. Spotify, literally just put in MAD Sports Network. And then we turn up there. You can listen on other podcast providers as well, but we much prefer Spotify. Devo, what's the crack? What do we do here? So, unless you have seen this before, I'm going to enlighten you as to what Mac and Devo actually do. So what we do is we select fans from clubs all across Europe, hence why we're doing Madrid today. Um, and we speak about the season that they have just previously had. We'll look at their current playing squad and we'll play a game called keep loan sell which is self-explanatory and then we'll look towards the future and look at realistic transfer targets which for real madrid could be pretty much anyone um and then we'll look towards the future so we'll look at what your expectations are for the upcoming season and we'll get your to piwa your preferred starting 11 for the first game of the season when the league kicks off Sounds good. Easy as that. So, why don't we start with um, last season then? Because um, a different season. Um, second place. Uh, a Champions League semi-final spot. A um, little trophy in there as well. What was your outtake on the whole season? Okay, so for, so, so for last season, I feel like it was a season of two halves, uh, to use the cliche, because we kind of had... Real Madrid before the World Cup, and then we had Real Madrid after the World Cup. And Real Madrid before the World Cup, uh, we were basically on par uh, to match our points per game that we had last season. Uh, we won the UEFA Super Cup to start off, which ended up being the last trophy for Kroos Casemiro Modric. Uh, Casemiro went off to United. Uh, Chouameni was put in his place to cover for him. And we, we actually did really well. I think we went on a 15-game unbeaten run, winning 13 of those, beating Barca on the way. Uh, we beat Atleti on the way. We beat Sevilla on the way. And then I think where it all started to fall apart was when we lost to Leipzig in the Champions League in, in one of the group stage games. And then we lost to Rayo Vallecano two games before the World Cup. And then from then on, it just sort of, it just went, it took a nosedive because... We came back from the World Cup break. Uh, Chouameni wasn't the same. Uh, for some reason, Ancelotti was no longer starting the midfield three that we had at the beginning of the season. Uh, Fede Valverde dipped <laughs> off a complete cliff as well. Um, and then, yeah, pretty much we then lost to Barcelona in the second league Clasico. And I think at that time, we were seven points behind in the league. We had... 
if we won, we were gonna take it to four points. If we lost, it gets to ten points. So we lost, and from then on, I feel like we just down tools and put all our eggs in the Champions League and in the Copa del Rey, and that's what kind of saved our season a little bit, barring the the exit to Man City, of course. So, yeah, let's just talk about the league situation because, as you said, finished second to Barcelona, about 10 points behind, uh, lost eight games in the league, which is kind of unheard of for uh, a Real Madrid side. Yeah. Um, as you said, the second half of the season wasn't good enough. You still had players who were performing. Vinicius, I think he, his performances last season were ridiculous when you look at his goals and assists. I think it's something like 47 goals and assists or something like that um, across all competitions. Benzema was putting in the goals, but Benzema's gone. Cruz is 33. Um, Modric has signed a new one-year contract, but he's going to be, what, 37, 38? Modric is 60. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's like 62. Um <laughs> Do you think that the, the this is a massive preseason for Real Madrid? Um, obviously, you've brought in Jude Bellingham, but Benzema's gone. Players are getting older. It's not just the two group that I mentioned, Cruz and Modric. Quite a few players in that squad who are, who are getting on a bit the wrong side of thirty. Um, so, do you think this is a huge preseason for Ancelotti and Real Madrid? Yeah. So, I think it's going to be huge in the sense of how we reshape our attack. But it's not going to be huge for the rest of the team because in terms of our defensive reinforcements, we're pretty stacked up there in midfield. We have a midfield that most teams would kill for. And somehow Danny Ceballos also managed to renew as well, even though he's going to be barely playing. I don't know why he keeps renewing. So I think the biggest factor going into this season is going to be who replaces Benzema because ideally Benzema would have stayed for one more year and then you have him ushered out in 2024, and then you ideally go for Mbappe or you go for whoever you want to go for in 2024, alongside bringing Endrick from Brazil. So I think Benzema going a year early kind of really shook everything up. So it's going to be interesting to see how Florentino Perez approaches the summer. Because when we were speaking earlier, I, I mentioned to you, I think this summer for Real Madrid, it's Kane or bust. And I think for Bayern Munich as well, it's Kane or bust. Because for me, Kane is the only striker on the market who basically guarantees you goals the same way Lewandowski was for Barcelona last year. So I think Bayern and Madrid are going to go toe-to-toe for Kane. And if none of them can pull Kane out of Spurs, I don't think either is going to go for a big-name striker. Interesting. Interesting. So um, shall we look at your playing squad as it stands at the moment? Uh, and we'll go through sure. that and play our game of sell, keep, loan. Um, we're going to judge your website as well. This is something that we, we've started to really enjoy as part of the show. Um, it is going through the Only website. The Spurs website it is as bad as Spurs. Spurs was terrible. Um, Man, this tech it, issue is is very, very alarming, um, especially when you're plugged in. Giga Clear, I'm coming for you tomorrow morning. <laughs> um because i've just run a speed test as well 183.7 megabits download speed and 168 167.8 upload speed yet i can't get barely i can barely get a word out um on here so yeah um giga, um, giga clear i'm coming for you tomorrow but yeah <laughs> um yeah, other internet providers are available and you are best off going with them. So, <laughs> um, here we go. Right, first things first, let's um, let's start on, on the website as a whole. Um, good, clean website. I'm a fan. It's not too shabby. It's, it, yeah. it beats Spurs, yeah, at least. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, maybe just. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're not trying to sell you, you know, Oh, there you go. At the bottom there, there's a stadium tour thing, but it's not oh, in yeah. your face. Like, please help us pay for our stadium. Please, please. <laughs> um, is that because that man yeah. page goes down for time? Yeah, but you know, the Madrid, it's, it's a whole thing. They've got the basketball team on there. Yeah. Um, the other Madrid sports that they represent, you know. Um, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty nifty website. Yeah, we gear that. Um, well done, Ralph. Well. One, yeah, one we're here to ones. look at the playing stuff. Let's players, um, get this squad out then, kids. Provisional squad for the 23-24 season. Two keepers. What are you saying? 
Uh, keep both of them. Although I think Andre Lunin might end up on loan. So it's all loan Lunin. Keep Courtois. Lovely. Uh, I, I like this this because uh, I had a look at this before. And it's just very streamlined. Streamlined. There's not many players in this squad by the looks of it. Yeah, but it's a very it's a very thin squad. <laughs> yeah, defenders. Uh, so we've got Carver Howe. Keep. Militao. Keep. Alaba. Keep. Nacho. Keep. He's been no, forging a career for way too long, Nacho. <laughs> that guy. Hasn't yeah. he just been made club captain or something? Yep, he's a club captain. Because yeah, uh, we do player. captaincy on seniority. So whoever is yeah. the longest And he's 33. Player. Can you believe he's 33 years <laughs> old? He's a career this whole damn time. Nah, oh, don't do wow. that to Nacho. He's 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 loved by the fans. He's like a cult hero because he's he's not the best defender, but he's just, you know, he'll never give you a bad game, basically. He's just there. Gives you 100%. Yeah. Passion. Never... <laughs> I'd rather have Rob Holden. <laughs> That's <laughs> blasphemy. I, I Rob Holden's got a better hairline. <laughs> yeah, fair. Um... Let's have a look at the hairline. <laughs> <laughs> right, go on in. Um, <laughs> um, Odrizola. So, so, Vasquez, Lucas He's, Vasquez, keep Frank Garcia, keep and uh, Rudiger, keep. Are you just saying keeps because the, the squad is that thin, or uh, <laughs> no, 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 this this is how I would I would do it if I was in charge. I'll hear it. Oh, it's all good. I'm all there. <laughs> Fallon Mendy, <laughs> I would sell. This is really oh okay now we are the selling is, yeah Man, that guy's dark fell. um <laughs> <laughs> Vallejo black of the berry the sweet of the juice they say we're allowed to say that um, um Vallejo uh so but he's gonna yeah. stay oh uh, good yeah. I want to say what my grandma used to say <laughs> you're black till it blue yeah <laughs> <laughs> what else say <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, June's yeah. only just got there, and he's got the big number five, so he's obviously yep. staying. Keep, um, keep, 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 keep that entire midfield. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Modders, obviously, he's just on new one-year deal. And Camavinga. <laughs> yep, keep that entire. Keep the whole midfield is staying. Yeah, keep, keep, everybody. Keep, keep, keep. Even Sabios, you would keep Sabios. Uh, okay, for him, because I would he... sell. I would sell if I was in charge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To whom? That's the problem. <laughs> Right. Real Betis wanted him, but he seems to keep flirting and then hesitating. With it. I don't know why. Yeah, this is an interesting one. So Vinny Junior, we know what's going on there. Yeah. Um, Rodrigo, keep. Jose Lu, I know. Kind of have to keep everyone because but... this is what we have. Yeah. yeah. Brahim, see, okay, so Brahim Diaz, we're gonna uh, keep. Yeah. But let me just. Keep, Two players there um, at the at the start line, and I'll work my way back. Uh, Brahim Diaz, who obviously has been on loan at Milan, and mm -hmm. I think Milan wanted to keep him, and he's been brought back. What are your thoughts on Brahim Diaz at Madrid? I I kind of like him, but I think there's too much competition in the position that he wants to play in. So I think mm. if he comes back to Madrid, he's going to end up having a career kind of like Asensio's, where you're never really going to get to play your position you're effectively going to be a permanent super sub. So with him, if he's okay with that, I guess it makes sense for him to come back. But if I was him, I would have actually stayed in Milan because we've seen a lot of young players have to make that decision in Madrid, whether it was uh, Martin Odegaard when he went to Arsenal, he had to choose between waiting for Modric to retire or being the captain of Arsenal, chose Arsenal. Uh, Takefuso Kubo is another one who had to go to Real Sociedad to go get minutes. And also our defenders, uh, Teo Hernandez and Ashraf Hakimi, they also had to go mm -hmm. to get minutes. So if I was in Brian's shoes, I would stay at Milan. But I feel like he's probably going to come back and give it a shot to try and break into the team for a year. And if he doesn't break into the team, then he's going to have the Asensio path, if I had to predict, yeah. Yeah. And Haselu, who's just come in on loan, um, <laughs> what is that about? This is a guy who played for Stoke, uh, flopped at Newcastle. Obviously, he's gone. But we say that. But then there are other players like Aspas yeah. who flopped in this country and has been very good yeah. in La Liga. So. And I think, yeah, that's the case with Haselu because he's, he's actually a very good striker. And funnily enough, he's 
scores against Madrid basically every single year that we play against him. So people were making the joke that we just signed him so that he doesn't score against us. But he's effectively a good mid-table striker. He'll get you 15-plus goals a season when he's starting. At least that's what his resume has shown. I think his lowest recent tally was maybe 12. And he's basically a good hold-up target man type striker. So I think it will work, not necessarily as a starter, because there are moments when Madrid were panicking in the second half and we just start crossing the ball. I think having Hosselu as an option is a lot better than having Mariano as an option. Uh, it's a lot better than having Jovic as an option who we tried out before. So I think Jose Lu in, as a rotation player should work. And he yeah. will actually be a threat. I, I predict him to maybe get 10 plus goals next season off the bench. But the big worry is that are you going to ask Jose Lu to be the Benzema, be Benzema. replacement? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the yeah. big elephant in the room right now. Yeah. Um, um, well, we, are, we are Maxim Chupo and Martin who came from uh, yeah. Stoke. And that is, and, that and is actually done, a and done perfect things, comparison, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah, respect, respect, Hosselu. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's actually a very um, good comparison. It's literally mirrored to what Bayern did with Chupa Motic. One, one last player that I just wanted to mention because you said you would sell him, mm-hmm. uh, and that's Ferland Mendy uh, at left back. Um, why would you look to sell Ferland Mendy? Now, with Mendy, this one is actually quite painful because I really like him as a defender. He's when he's fit, he's been one of the best defenders for Madrid because he's the only, him and maybe Nacho are the only two defenders who, they're like defend first. They don't worry about like going up the field, attacking and everything. So they've kind of always held it down for us. But I think for him right now, he's at a sort of crossroads where his fitness is becoming a big issue. So Madrid used to delay having to get a left back. And then I think this window we saw with Fran Garcia coming, we kind of forced our hand to be like, okay, if Mendy's not going to be fit, we can't go through an entire season of playing Kamavinga at left back. So this season, I think it's do or die for Mendy. And if he doesn't cement his position as a starter, I think the club will look to sell. So for me, I if I was in charge, I would actually cash in this season whilst he still has value. I wouldn't take the risk of letting him cool. spend another year in and out the hospital. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, Sorry, so anyone who's gonna... watching, anyone who's watching now is probably thinking, "What the hell's going on right now?" I'm just taking some pictures um, of <laughs> the fact that I'm sat right next to my router, and I'm also <laughs> plugged in via Ethernet as well. So, just putting that out there, I'm yeah, very, the very angry right now. I'm, I'm yeah. hiding it very well, but I tell you what. I'm a very, very angry man, and it's not because I'm five foot six. Okay. <laughs> I, I think he's, you can send this video as evidence to to Giga Clear. Um, yeah. To back up your your complaint. <laughs> I actually think though, when you listen it back, like I don't think it delays as bad. I'm hoping not. No. Uh, I might. Um, but um, let's hope it doesn't because um, I can't be asked to edit this evening, um, if I'm honest. So uh, what you see is what you get and um, what you hear <laughs> this week. Um, you know, you're all loyal anyway. You've heard it all before. So um, should we get this um, starting 11 out? Let's do it. Oh, here we go. Create formation. Our favorite page. So Taps. So remember what, Taps. Um, mm-hmm. Go on, Gav. Oh, no, yeah, go ahead. Explain, explain, explain. No, I was just going to say, so remember that this is your um, preferred start at 11 for the new season. This can include realistic transfer targets that you would like to see starting the season for Real Madrid. So uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be players who are at the club currently. Sure. It's going to um, it's, so it's kind of going to be pretty basic because I feel like Kane is the one that I want. Everyone else, you know. It's yeah, whatever. but you've got a lot of midfield options. So, and there's a couple of players that are uh, flex <laughs> positions, if you want to call it that. Oh so, yeah, uh, you're going to see that in my formation. Exactly. So heavy. formation on that. What are we going? We're we going four three three. Yeah, it's going to be a four three three on paper, but it's going to play like a four four two. Okay, right then. I'm okay. going to put my mic down Tactical. and I'll let you take it away, Devo. If um, if I don't tap anything, it's because my audio has gone all funny again. <laughs> All right, so uh, goalkeeper, I think that's pretty the Belgian easy. That's, yeah. that's a given. You fell out with his Belgian manager. 
<laughs> he likes to have a bit of an argument that. with the national team, doesn't he? Or Courtois. Um, right, so Courtois in net. And right back. Uh, I'm going to go with Danny Carvalho. All right back. Yeah, another one of those players who's just the wrong side of 30. Sooner or later, they're going to have to replace him, surely. Um, but not yep. for now. S- centre back. Uh, Edward Militao, uh, right centre back. Mm-hmm. And David and... Alaba is left centre back. Ooh, no room for Rudiger. Nah, Rudiger's got a he's got a whole bench for now. See, because I the Alaba thing strange because I swear when he left by and he said he doesn't want to play centre back and he's been there pretty much the whole time. There we go. Yeah. Left back. But you play for Real Madrid, and if you want to play for, play for Real Madrid, you play where you are told. <laughs> you, right? you know, you know. If man tells uh, me I'm playing right wing, you know, bear in mind I'm a left fullback. <laughs> I'm playing right wing because I'm playing for Real Madrid. I'm sure we're going to see that this season with Jude. There's going to be a game in which we have Gamavinga at left back and Jude at right back. That's that's <laughs> going to happen this season. So he's yeah. just starting left back uh, for next season. Fran Garcia is going to be my left back. Mm-hmm. Look at Fran Garcia. Don't know much about that guy, but I'm sure we'll learn. Very, yeah, he's a very good uh, attacking fullback. Uh, we basically sold him to Rio with a buyback clause, and he's been special. one of the most. Yeah, he's been one of the most creative uh, fullbacks in the league. Like his highest. Uh, What's that stat? Like crossing. He's like one of the best crosses mm. in the league, essentially. So you're now seeing the Jose Lu link. If we're going to play crossing, inshallah, you know, mm. with Jose, <laughs> it makes sense to have full backs who can cross. All right. And uh, your inshallah came in out for us. Let's go. <laughs> right. this, this, I'm intrigued. I want to know this midfield three so bad. Uh, it's going to be Tromini holding midfielder. My boy, Boy, spell it. Go on, Gav, Don't watch man. me. Don't watch me. <laughs> We're going to have Tony Kroos at the left side of the central midfield. And then I'm going to have Eduardo Camavinga as the right sided midfielder. Oh, no space for Jude. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's still three players left. Yeah, but you're not playing Jude on the wing, are you? Playing Jude. He's playing Jude. And then this is where it gets interesting because at left wing we have Vinicius. Wow, what a player! Now, surely this is the stage is being set for Vinicius to be the guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, striker. Now, I'm gonna have go. Rodrigo. You're not gonna have Harry Kane. No, I can't. I want Kane deep down inside. So this is exactly, Kane, yeah. This is what it's this about. Is it. This, this is. is but I'm yeah. going with I'm going with what what I want what I'm gonna see in, in on the first day of the season. Nah, nah, that's nah, what, what you want. We want what you want. You want what you want. So what Kane I want. Going in, here. in an ideal world. I'm taking okay. away from you, Taps. Kane is going in here. <laughs> okay. Now, you you do also have a ta- a chance to <laughs> take back anything else you said. Okay. Kane. Should we put Todd Kane at left Um <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So if it's what I want, it's gonna be Kane and Rodrigo. Yeah. Okay. We can do, we'll do, and then I'll show you the realistic one that I feel like. <laughs> nah, we don't want the realistic one. Really. <laughs> that, that's too obvious, you know, that's what everyone else is doing. So, yeah. So, on this paper, is based purely on what you want as yeah, a fan so of Madrid. As a fan, yes. this is what I w- would want to as see. As a fan, line up on the first this day is what season. you want to see on the first day of the season, you know, like. Like you don't need any other signings. You don't need another centre back. You don't need any more midfielders. I'm sure you don't anyway. Um, yeah. And it's, it's like if, if you had all the money and all the power mm-hmm. and all the time, this is this is the the lineup that you would be going with. Yeah, this you would be it. my starting eleven. Love if you that. gave me all the budget, I would make some signings, but on, none then. of them would walk into the eleven. What about what? About, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. What realistic ones could you see? potentially going into this so realistic signings uh one i would put in a cheeky loan bid for sadio mania Bayern munich oh mm-hmm. i'm not that against that. 
uh, I would test Bayern's resolve, and if he's not really getting along with Tuchel, you know, I don't think they'd be opposed to a loan offer. Uh, mm. And you don't have to commit to him, just like with Hosselu. It's, it's a one-year loan. Um, I would then go for Kyle Walker at right back, but I would think... Would you have Kyle Walker starting ahead of Carvajal? No, coming off the bench. I would, okay. I would start Carvajal. I was just desperate uh, to make a change. <laughs> <laughs> now I would start Carvajal. Uh, the only player that I, if I was to buy a player to put in that position over Carvajal, it would actually be surprisingly Juan Foyt from Villarreal. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Also, a massive, massive flopper at Spurs. Yeah. But, Didn't do know, well at Spurs. Very young. He's very uh, young he when he went at Spurs. Very young. Very but he's young. been doing really well in the Liga, one of the best. He's right been backs fantastic in the season, Liga. Yeah. And then my final two signings would be one, Samu Chukweze from Villarreal. Mm -hmm. I would bring him in order to bring a, a rotation attacker so okay. that you don't just have Brahim and Mane off the bench. And then my wild card transfer. Now, this transfer would be if Harry Kane doesn't go through which we know it's likely not going to happen because Daniel Levy is going to be stubborn. I would actually throw in a bid for Young Min Son. Interesting. Mm. Because if we're going to not replace Benzema fully, we might as well do what Napoli did and just play a line of... Remember Napoli's attack that had Dries Mertens, Lorenzo Insigne, yeah. and Callejon as a three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So if yeah, if we're not gonna buy a Benzema replacement, I would get Young Min Son and then play Vinicius on the left, Son through the middle, Rodrigo on the right. And you just like have it. them interchange. I don't hate yeah. that at all. Because you, you need that fluidity. Because like, there's all this talk about Mbappe, mm -hmm. you know, Mbappe is all openly said on many occasions you just want to play through in the middle. But then you got Vinicius Junior, a generational talent. Mm -hmm. who plays in the same position as Mbappe. So and yeah, I, th I think that's off. what's changed massively over the years is that we kind of knew if Mbappe was going to come, he was going to take that left-wing spot. But now if Mbappe comes, I think Vinicius remains the left-winger and Mbappe is probably going to have to play through the middle and they'll just swap mid-game. Yeah. Mm. And I think he'll be happy enough once he's walking away with like five Champions Leagues in six years. I think he'll be cool. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be all right. You know you might calm down a bit. Bridges. <laughs> bridges. So I suppose uh, now it's time to look forward to the new season. Um, mm -hmm. We want kind of expectations for Real Madrid. I suppose the expectation as a Real Madrid fan is win the Champions League, <laughs> win the league, uh, win Copa del Rey. Um, but yeah, realistically, what do you see for Real Madrid next season? So for me, my realistic expectations would be similar to what we had this season. Uh, you go in aiming to win the league. That's the number one priority, in my opinion. Um, Champions League semi-final, at the very least. You don't have to win it. <laughs> um, and then I think a Copa del Rey final, at the very least. And Spanish Super Cup, you try win it. So you win the league, you win the Spanish Super Cup, and then... You make two finals. I would take make a semi final and a final. Oh, I'd love to be a fan of a club where that expectation <laughs> is there. I, f I feel like that's realistic because I feel like winning the Champions League, although it's kind of our thing, it, we can only do it so many times. Like that's the worst thing about it, though. Taps. <laughs> yeah. What you said isn't even uh, a pipe dream. It is realistic and <laughs> is more than likely going to happen. And Yeah, and I feel know, like maybe it? this season our odds would be better than, than last year because we'll be a mm. bit more better prepared. But yeah, winning the Champions League, it's, it's always a tough ask. But if we can get to a semi-final, then, you know, whatever happens, happens. Do you yeah, feel the big, that... Oh, sorry. Yeah, Taps, do you, do you feel that there, there's, there's, there's almost too much choice in midfield right now? Yeah, I feel, I feel like we're one, two, two midfielders too deep. So realistically, Danny Ceballos should not have renewed. Realistically, we should have said goodbye to one of Cruz or Modric. But because they're both going to stay, and I think they're both going to retire next year, we've kind of just taken that step to be able to give Jude a little bit of a transition period. So 
that goes back to like the 11 that I was actually going to mention. The 11 that I think is going to start the season is going to have Jude playing right wing. He's going to be playing the Fede Valverde role. So mm. he'll be on the wing nominally, but he's just going to be like an attacking midfielder in and around there. I think that's yeah, what's going to happen. Because he's going to have a bit of a job on his hand. He scored something like 14 goals for Dortmund last season. Yeah. Obviously, Benzema's gone. That is a massive source of, of your goals. Um, is it a case of, as you said before, Harry Kane may not may not be available. Um, if you don't get Harry Kane and you don't see Madrid signing a top, top striker, I can't see them going for like an Austrian man or someone like that. But is it a case of spread those goals out across the across the team so the likes of Bellingham chipping in Valverde chipping in Vinicius Rodrigo and just kind of having a kind of like what we saw we keep bringing these back to Arsenal every single show but what we saw at Arsenal where Jesus got 10 plus goals Saka got 10 plus goals Odegaard Martinelli is that what Madrid are going to try and focus on next season do you think yeah and I think with the rumors of Rodrigo moving central as well that's why I kind of floated the idea oh. of if you can't get your hands on Kane, then you might as well get a young man's son, get a Sadio Mane, someone who's able to play in like that inside forward role, who can just provide more goals. Because I think Vinicius will give you uh, double digit goals and assists. Rodrigo, he did hit it last year. I think he had 19 goals and 11 assists, which is not a bad return because Carlo oh. Ancelotti actually challenged him. They had a bet to that Rodrigo would hit double digit goals. Uh, he also had a bet with Valverde, but I think Valverde ended up being one or two shy. <laughs> so I think ideally that the team is going to spread the goals. You're going to have Vinicius score the bulk of the goals. You're going to have Hosselu try to get 10 plus, maybe 12. Uh, Rodrigo, again, if you can get 15 from Rodrigo. And then from the midfield, if you can get Jude and Fede Valverde to put in like a combined of 20, then you're, you're, you're good in that department, so... It's going to be interesting because the, the Benzema hole is the big elephant in the room because a lot of rumors are saying that we're going to go from Mbappe this summer, but I don't I don't think that happens this summer. That's a lot of goals to replace. Uh, one other person yeah. who I think we need to talk about is Carlo Ancelotti because um, he was under mm -hmm. pressure at points last season. Um, if, for example, there's a poor start to the season, do you see Ancelotti? Do you think he's in trouble? Do you think that he's he's under pressure to keep his job? No, surprisingly, I think he's more comfortable than a lot of people think. Because even though the fans always turn on him whenever the results go bad or anything like that, I think there's sort of like a mutual understanding between him and the board that when his contract expires, he's going to go. So unless things go completely AWOL as in terms of we get knocked out of the Champions League early or something like that, like a group stage exit. I think it would have to be something drastic that would get him fired. And so maybe a Champions League group stage exit and or failure to like stay in the top three at the beginning of the season, like that first half of the season. That's the only thing that would get Ancelotti fired. Because I think right now Madrid is in a bit of a period where we're trying to find the next big manager but there's no real like good managers out there i remember tuchel was rumored at some point before the whole Bayern thing mm -hmm. happened and remember so, that yeah so i think that whole part of there not being like any proven managers on the market i feel like that's also buying ancelotti time because he's not like necessarily the whole cliche of if it's broke don't fix it right i feel like perez is sort of just buying his time and waiting to see what happens in in 2024 yeah, because there was uh, all the talk of him taking the Brazil national job, wasn't there? And yeah, at that point, I think I was thinking I think that's maybe been Poch, well. maybe Nagelsmann. Yeah, I think for me, ideally, I would want Nagelsmann, but I don't know if Nagelsmann would be willing to wait a year. That would mm. be the the big elephant in there. Because we kind of all know Ancelotti twenty twenty four. He's gonna head off to Brazil and ride into the sunset. So yeah. What's a Which manager on the market will will wait a whole season? It might be a case at that point, and this is what used to wind me up with the Arsenal. Sorry for bringing it back, like like Devo has. But like Arsenal, like Wenger was smart. He always used to sign a two-year deal every odd number year, 
So therefore, when it was a time for a Euros or a World Cup and like someone was going well, it's like, well, Wenger's got a year left. We can't get rid of him. So like maybe it's a case of waiting to see what decent national manager is going to do a job. That's that's um, actually a in, good shout. That is, yeah, that's a good shout. Mm-hmm. After the 2024 Euros, something could happen there. Yeah, maybe. But I'm trying to think of the, the managers in that competition right now. Because Flick, mm. I feel like Flick is... Hansi Flick Flick's is not, done himself yeah. damage. <laughs> Flick's, Flick's damage his reputation. Barn himself. Yeah, he'll be getting sacked soon. <laughs> Mancini is there. Yeah, they, yeah. they are well, think we're not us. It's kind of basically Nagelsmann, I guess. Like He's the one. Yeah, yeah. or Eddie Howe. <laughs> Eddie Howe, can you imagine <laughs> that? Eddie Howe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Oh Aladice is playing around somewhere. Yeah, well, he said he could manage Real Madrid one time, didn't he? <laughs> but, um, that's, uh, that wouldn't be surprising. Like, if I had to choose, though, I would actually go for a very unknown manager. Well, people in La Liga know him. You know Imanol Alguacil, the Real Sociedad coach? Okay. Yeah. He's done a great job. Yeah. Yeah. I would go for him, but I feel like he would get the, the Lopetegui treatment. Like, I was going to say, Lopetegui, yeah. he was <laughs> almost like relatively exactly. unknown to the wider world unless you know the league. And yeah, him going there almost, well, pretty much shattered his, his career, didn't yeah. he? A bit like the old uh, uh, AV, AVB. AVB uh, at Chelsea. Scenario. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I like, feel like that's the worry number. with these coaches. Yeah, because yeah. Perez, Perez is not going to give you any room to, to fail or shake or anything like that. Uh-huh. If you're not no, like a I, big name, yeah. I don't feel that um, a more inexperienced manager will be allowed to get the wallet out and start spreading, start spreading peas all over the place. So, yeah, it's a it's a tough situation to be in. But um, yeah, yeah, not yet, because even we could wait for Raúl or wait for Xabi Alonso, but it's, they're still Xabi too early. Alonso. Jeffy Alonso, that's a great shot, yeah. Yeah. In the future, in the future, though, I don't see it happening for like. Man, if he has a good season seven, now, yeah. if he has a good season right now, mm-hmm. gets gets Leverkusen top four and wins the Pokal, there's no reason why. Like look, we know how restricted Bundesliga clubs are, excluding Bayern. But if he could put that sort of pressure on, it's like, well, what would happen if? They had a little bit more license. And then Musa Diaby might still be there. You could take him over. And... Yeah. <laughs> that would be, that's actually one of the right backs that I would go for. But I don't see Madrid going for it, unfortunately. Mm. Oh. But yeah, I feel like Xabi Alonso will eventually become Madrid manager one day. But just not, not now. Mm, indeed. Yeah, great shout. Well, uh, that brings us to the end of uh, Mac and Devo Do Season 2 Episode I'll say episode three. Um, For the audio guys, this is actually episode four. Um, But for the visual guys, it is episode three. Reason being our previous show, which you'll be able to go back on YouTube and on Spotify to listen to. Um, The show with Newcastle, of course, Kendall Rowan, wouldn't ask anybody else. And and Dave Asprey for Forrest, once again, wouldn't ask anybody else. Um, That that was like a, a double header on the visual but on the audio was split into two shows because that's how we do things. But yeah, um, Taps, you've been an absolute legend. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Um, you are literally like royalty um, to uh, MAD Sports Network. Before we go, we do have a little question here um, from Chip Talk. Uh, who said, do you think Camavinga needs to go out on loan? Nah, not at all. Kamavinga is going to be a starter next season. I I think the whole rumors of him going. There was a time when he was rumored to be going to Arsenal. I remember as well. But I like, got gassed. I yeah. got gassed. Yeah. <laughs> Unnecessarily. Nah, I think it would have been a massive mistake from Real Madrid. Like he, if I could have a team of eleven Kamavingas, I would take eleven Kamavingas on the pitch. He's just yeah. that important to us. And last season, although he was doing it from left back, he was so crucial for us. And I think now with Modric staying for one more year, now sort of Ancelotti has the, what's the English word for it? He just, he basically has incentive to bench Modric now. So you're not going to see Modric play 90% of the games anymore. I think it's time to start dancing between the rotation for Cruz and Modric. 
rather than have you man together. Uh, have you have you man seen that? Um, you know, like when you build your eleven, a bit like us. Um, but you can pl- put yeah. names underneath. Have you seen, it. Have you yeah, seen yeah. the Camavinga one? It's like, oh, we can yeah. play this person, this person. Yeah. And like, <laughs> I, I was, I, do you know, yeah, when I first looked at it, I looked at the midfield straight away and I was like, oh, you can start Camavinga there. Yeah, you know, or you could have him as a replacement. And I saw the left back one. I was like, oh, yeah, do you know, I literally bought into it and I looked at the goalkeeper <laughs> and it was called to our starting or Camavinga. And I was like, oh. Yeah. I remember <laughs> seeing that 11. It was yeah. done by, by Managing Madrid. So they were doing like a depth chart. Of all the yeah. starters, and and Kamavinga was literally the second option in every position. Everywhere. <laughs> so no, you cool. know what I like about um, Kamavinga is he, he. You forget how young he is. He yeah. plays with a maturity, um, and his attitude. It, he just seems like he's got the right. Um, he's got a good head on his shoulders. Um, I think he will go far, and I think he will be a very important player for for Madrid to go for, going forward. Yeah, um, he plays way beyond his years. You you would yeah. think he's older than Tromini, actually, if, if you were to like, yeah. not know their ages. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Before we go, go on then. Your dream midfield three. Um, because I don't see uh, Chips said, can't see, kind of trust him in the big games. Um, but I, I agree, sort of thing. I don't see him trusted massively yeah. in, in, in midfield. Like, where he is trusted more is that left back. It's almost like, oh, you know, I've been you off out of left back. Don't worry about you. But your, your dream midfield, you're the manager, you know, um, I know we did our um, create eleven uh, crows to to a many and Camavinga. Is that the actual dream, or would would you prefer, um, let's say this season and next season? Just say if you weren't making any signings, like would you see say like next season twenty four twenty five seeing two or many Camavinga and Jude in that in those in in that midfield three. Yeah. So to touch on what he was saying about Carlo not trusting him in big games, I do agree there. And that's something that held us back last season because Carlo, in every single big game, he would rather play Cruz and Modric, even if they've played like the previous 10 games in a row. He, he still treats them like they're 25. So going forward, we're probably going to see a, a bit of that where in the big games, it's going to be Cruz and Modric plus one. And then, so for what I would want to see in, in the rest of the games, like all the smaller, if you're playing like a eighth place team and below. I want to see Cruz, Chormini, Kamavinga as the midfield or totally drop Cruz and then play Jude. So for this season, like I was saying, I, I think we're going to see Cruz, Chormini, Kamavinga. And then next season when Cruz and Modric go, then we're going to see uh, Jude, Chormini and Kamavinga as the midfield. And then Fede Valverde well, is going to be now. quasi right wing, right midfielder in that Oh. undescribed position that's just there <laughs> <laughs> on the way you just add an extra midfield the yeah the valverde role yeah the valverde yeah role. you will play where you are told but yeah taps once again thank you so much for being part of the show thanks for being such a legend to the MID sports network fraternity no thank you so um, much for having me man it's definitely yeah, been it's an good, honor man. and anyone in the comments if you haven't subbed sub to them they'll give you great bundesliga coverage great banter just good football channel Tell him again. Okay. Yeah, there's okay. that twenty. There's that twenty quid for uh, I said for. Uh, <laughs> saying, uh, <laughs> lovely. Um, right, don't forget you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash MAD Sports Network. Um, hit that notification bell, smash that like button, and uh, don't forget as well you can listen to us on Spotify or wherever you get your podcast from. Um, but ideally on Spotify is the best place to find us. Just search MAD Sports Network, Mad Sports Network. Uh, next week we are joined by none other than Dan Lawless, West Ham fanatic. And I wanted to wait a week for that as well, because there might be things happening in the meantime at West Ham. So let's see what his thoughts are on Mac and Devo do. But for myself, Gav Mac, the boy Devo and King Taps down there. Take care. Peace.